Hey there everyone, Wreck This Journal is back. We've made it up to number 14 in the series so far. If you're not caught up on all of the previous videos, I'll link the entire Wreck This Journal playlist below so you can check that out. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. Click the subscribe button below if you wanna see all the new videos I post right when I post them. I do a lot of different DIYs, arts and craft videos, challenges, and random stuff. I'm gonna start uploading a new video every Friday and Sunday from here on out. I'm gonna try my best. So if you guys wanna see more Rectus journals, please give this video a thumbs up to let me know and I'll try and post them every Sunday or every other Sunday. I also just posted my very first bullet journal plan with me video. So if you'd rather that I alternate between this and Rectus journal on Sundays, did I hold this upside down? Yes then let me know in the comment section below what your preference is. And since some of you have been telling me that a lot of my most recent videos haven't been sending to your subscription boxes, notifications, and haven't been recommended very much, here is a little screenshot of some of my most recent tutorials and videos. So you can check those out. I'll link everything in the description box below. Sorry if this intro got a little bit long, but there was a lot to say. So now without further ado, let's get on into wrecking the journal, making it pretty and having fun. I'm starting out with doodle over top of this page and in the margins. If you guys are curious and you have a couple extra minutes to spare, I really recommend that you pause the screen and read the words that are on here. It's kind of interesting. I decided to do a giant swirly melting ice cream cone as you can see here. And what I did first is just sketch the outline with pencil and then I went over in a very thin micron pen and I made the lines very scribbly and sketchy so I basically uh, overlapped the lines a little bit and made them look a little bit messy. Then I went over with a little bit wider of a micron pen and I went over those exact same lines again to make them darker and also to make them look even more scribbly and layered. I made the cone into a stylized waffle cone by just putting diagonal lines one way and intersecting them the other and off screen I even did a couple more lines going the opposite diagonal direction so they're going four different ways. After letting the micron pen ink dry for a couple minutes I went in with an eraser and I erased all the pencil lines underneath to make it look a little bit neater. Keeping those pencil lines isn't the style that I was going for so I personally decided to get rid of them even though I did mention that it's supposed to be kind of messy. And here I'm using a very bright pink brush tip marker to color in the entire ice cream portion of the doodle. This is going to be my only bold pop of color on the page. Everything else in the background is going to be very dull and muted so this stands out even more and brings more contrast to the piece. I outlined first with a gray Crayola marker and I did another small outline with a darker gray and I'm using that same darker gray to make all the doodles in the background. I'm kind of doing raindrop teardroppy shapes to match the drips of the ice cream and also I have this paisley shape that I did here. I filled in this blank space mostly with wavy lines, circles, and diagonal lines, swirls, and triangles. So just a mix of random shapes. There's some squares in there and dots. So you can really do anything you want with this. And to build up more dimension, I did go in with a white gel pen at the very end and I outlined shapes just on random parts of the page to make it really flow. Now this is making me really want ice cream. I think my favorite of all time is probably strawberry cheesecake, but since it's fall right now, I'm actually craving a pumpkin ice cream, like pumpkin pie or something like that. That sounds really good right now. But what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Leave a comment below to let me know. That's it for this one. I think it turned out really cool for something that initially was so simple. This goes to show that an art piece doesn't have to be overly intricate to be visually appealing. I think I spent maybe an hour tops on the background and just maybe 20 minutes on the ice cream itself. So it wasn't a very long drawn process. Totally opposite, however, from this next page that I'm working on, which is find a way to wear the journal. This drawing I had been working on last week already, and I spent multiple days doing different elements of this design. So one day I did all the pencil lines of the girl, and then the next day I think I finished that up and added in the flowers and paisley shapes in the background. The next day I moved on to inking over 
all the lines like you're seeing me do here kind of because my cat just decided to walk in front of the camera as i was doing this but you can see a little bit of what i'm doing here i did each outline separately and then i went over each one and made parts of that darker on the hair especially you can see the varying line widths it gets really thin and then thick and then thin again i wanted the lines on the flower to really pop out so i made those pretty thick and after i was done inking and everything dried then it's actually a day later now. I went in with Prismacolored pencils and I'm making a very light background and just kind of blotching the color on, almost like patchwork. But instead of making them look like individual shapes, I'm trying to blend them together and kind of make a gradient with all the colors. So you can see here that I'm trying to fade the colors into one another. In some places, if I colored too dark, I went back in with an eraser and just lightened the seam between the two colors. And then in this area, you can see I'm taking the pink and I am extending it out to all the surrounding shapes and colors. And with the blue, I'm doing the exact same thing. I am feathering that out to all the surrounding colors and making sure that it's lighter when you get into another color to make it look like it's really having that gradient blurry effect. It kind of almost looks fuzzy like a soft blanket. I like it. I opted to leave most of the areas on this page black and white, but I did want to add a little bit of color and dimension to the Rectus journal itself. So here I'm making it look like my personal journal, which has a red kind of plaid cover. So I'm just doing intersecting lines with that red, and I have a couple different shades of red that I used as well. And this is what I ended up with. On the opposite page, I wanted to leave it as is for the most part so you can really read those words and they stick out, but I did do three flowers around the page. Hi, I'm Carrie. So I met Sarah through doing polymer clay and crafting, and now I'm a body painter as you can see. So I got to help her out with this page. Check out my Instagram, it's at Makeup Madhouse. I would love to see you guys on my page. Yeah, she's super creative, so please check her out. And now let's get into painting. Yes. So now you guys know that the drawing was only half of this page. I did something extra special and something I've never done before. I reached out to a friend who used to do clay videos on YouTube, Carrie. She's awesome. She used to be creative clay here and we go way back. I actually reviewed one of her packages after we had known each other for a while. So if you look back on an old review video of mine, you can probably find one of her charms. She did this really cute teddy bear I remember with dangling arms and legs. So yeah, obviously now she has changed her focus to makeup and body painting. She does so many different things. A fun fact about this is when I was sitting and getting my makeup done, I actually didn't look at myself until it was completely finished. So I didn't look in any of the mirrors. I didn't look at my camera. I didn't have the screen flipped out so I could see myself. I was really surprised when it was finished. Going into this, I sent her a few pictures of doodles from my Rectus journal and other things that I've done like the Zentangle book. And I also just gave her a list of elements that I like, such as bows. You guys know I love bows and just swirly zen tangly shapes basically so she took that all in and made it her own as you can see she first painted on all the colors of the rainbow basically in pastel form all over my body and face on my face she filled in my eyebrows with different colors and then she did these really cool swirly shapes with dots and outlines and of course the little rectangle to write the wreck this journal label we thought that these prompts were very fitting to the body paint design there's a scribble wildly violently with reckless abandon. I think that one ties in great with the ribbons that look like they're wrapping around my arms and also the swirly designs. And of course we had to put find a way to wear the journal because that's what this is all about. All right, so I haven't seen my makeup this whole time. I'm about to look in the mirror. Whoa, that's so cool. Oh, I see the bow. The bra piece is based on a design from my Zentangle book that I used to work on a while back. I don't know if you guys want to see more of those. Let me know if you do. There had to be a turquoise bow because that's my absolute favorite color. And right next to that is a mandala type design. Just 
The final page I decided to do is actually one that's displayed on me with the body paint, the Scribble Wildly Violently with Reckless Abandon page. For this one, I sketched out a very simple drawing of a woman with long flowy hair. I'm depicting her with her eyes closed and kind of looking off to the side so you can see her back. I'm not great at doing proportions on people correctly and this is something I really need to practice but at the same time I wanted this image on my page so I didn't want to wait and learn and practice more before I did it. I wanted to just do it so if any of you guys are ever worried about something not looking good just take a step back and do it anyway. In the future, you can always recreate this work and look back at your old one and see how much you improved. I decided to go over the regular pencil lines with a black colored pencil instead of the Micron pen because I wanted this image to look a little bit more soft and not as sharp. I think the hardest thing about this was finding reference images that fit my vision of how this girl should look. To be honest, I don't know where her other shoulder and back should end, so I just kind of faded that part out to make it look like it's going away into the background. So now comes the scribbling part. I took these felt tip pens, and I'm just scribbling with the lightest color first, so there's kind of like a salmon-y pink, then a darker pink. I also did a purple and a light blue. This page actually has a lot of meaning to me, and that's why I wanted to just get it out here right away instead of practicing and making my figure perfect. I want this page to represent someone who is having a hard time with all the thoughts going on in their head and around them, and it makes them feel like they are alone in that moment. So I feel like that's what this page represents to me. All the scribbly lines around are all the screaming voices of all the things that maybe are going wrong at a certain point in life and you're just kind of stuck there in that moment. If you're going through a rough time, you don't feel like yourself and you don't feel like you stand out in the world. You feel like you're just kind of there and invisible and everything in your head is what's screaming, standing out and overpowering you. It's another relatively simple piece as in it took me about an hour to create completely, but the message behind it stands out more to me than some of the pages that I spent 12 hours on that are just there to look pretty. What are your thoughts about the art that I displayed in this week's Wreck This Journal series? Let me know in the comment section below maybe what your favorite page was, what you got out of some of the pieces that I showcased. I feel like this installment is probably my favorite in terms of emotional output. Normally I create things that are just kind of cute and pretty in there, but this last one actually has a really big meaning. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up to let me know. I'm gonna put a couple videos on the screen here. So if you haven't seen them yet and you want to, go ahead and click on them or you can click on the iCard here for more fun videos. Also, don't forget to check out Carrie on Instagram, Makeup Madhouse, she's so awesome. I wanna thank her for doing this awesome body paint for me. It was such a cool experience. I have a new video planned for Friday, so I hope to see you back here then and that you have a great rest of the day. Bye.